seconds to... Is it okay to go on? Oh. Some new information, Pernilla, she is going to uh, translate to German. So, yes. <laughs> there is a God. Yes. We need the green light from the technician. Ah, can I start? All right, welcome to this evening's lecture. Um, which I've called Life as a Practice of Love, or Life as a, a Training in Love. And if you look over the world today, it can be difficult to see that life should be a practice of love. Uh, on the contrary, there seems to be an opposite practice, or training, practice to get ready for battle. And there is a very warlike mentality at the moment on the planet. And a growing sense of not settle for anything, uh, and people are getting really good at scolding each other on, on social media, as we all know. And when humanistic modern people uh, look through or over society today, and on the background of world history, they, they, they very quickly conclude that there has always been war and strife, that there has always been a struggle for existence and the benefits of existence that in reality nothing noticeable has happened with the development of humanity, at least in the moral area, uh, despite colossal technical progress, as we can see around the world. It's true that it can be difficult to see the progress or the humanistic, humanistic development, as there is still so much uh, animal mentality. Um, in man. But if you look more closely, the humanity has been in developing in the last few millennia, and maybe especially in the last uh, 100 or 150 years. Um, we have seen human rights being born, democracies being born, uh, women's rights, children's rights, and the opportunity to get an education uh, in many places on the globe. Access to hospital services for many and a peaceful society to live in. And, of course, there are many places and many societies on which are pure war zones and whose uh, inhabitants are to tormented and tortured and live under slave-like uh, slave conditions. But that does not really change the fact that uh, we, we have seen a broad, humane uh, movement across the globe which promotes more and more uh, de democracy and humanity for more and more people. And there are completely, uh, one could say, new ideals for human life uh, behind this development. And it is a consequence of the old world impulse, as Martinus calls it, which is really an, an expression of the growing consciousness of the living planet and manifests itself in new, more humane, religions and religious philosophies than there have been before on this planet, where the religions reflected the more primitive and selfish net nature of man. And we see these new humane ideals represented in the East by Confucius, Taoism, in the Upanishads, in, 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 in India, and the yogi philosophy, with very high uh, moral ideals, the Greek philosophy and beginning of democracy, the unity culture, and not least Buddha, Christ, and Muhammad as the three biggest bearers of these uh, new uh, humane ideals. Here the ideal of charity and empathy for all living beings is manifested in the different ways and degrees in, in the different uh, religions and cultures. 
On the symbol for the principle of the world redemption, we can see how providence up here uh, is constantly educating and guiding people through the world impulses, first for the uh, more primitive people, you can see it's symbolized with the orient color for, for the energy of gravity, and nature people, primitive people. But then we have, with, with the yellow color here, we have the more humane uh, religions, Buddhism, Christ, uh, Christianity, Islam, etc. And when, when we have um, gone, th gone through these religious stages, uh, we often become atheists or materialists, and then in the end we have the, the spiritual science, symbolized with the white uh, light here. Um, principle of the world redemption. Oh, no. <laughs> it came again. Um, so providence is, is constantly educating and guiding people, both through world redeemers, uh, who incarnate on the planet, and people have, who have progressed uh, further in their development and can receive inspiration from the spiritual beings who make up the Godhead's primary sense organs or helpers, what we know as providence. We can thus see world impulses that have stimulated natural people and their survival in a harsh and primitive world, as I mentioned there, before life can begin to train one's or practice one's ability to love other beings, life must first train the opposite ability. And that's the, the contrast to the ability to love and the ability to survive in a very uh, primitive world which is completely characterized by the killing principle. An ability to take care of oneself and one's uh, loved ones. That means a necessary egoistic drive for self-preservation, and it's clear that these first primitive people did not have the ability to empathize with other beings, except perhaps briefly for their offspring or, or uh, partners. I hope this is going to <laughs> stick, otherwise I'm in trouble. And as Martinus explains with his main symbol, then our entire ability to experience, the ability to experience life and the development of consciousness comes into being or occurs on the basis of the experience of contrast in existence. So for the consciousness to experience in the highest blissful divine worlds with cosmic consciousness, it must also have passed through the darkness of the deepest consciousness. And the darkness where the living being experiences the greatest contrast to the divine existence is in the animal kingdom, where we create um, the most darkness for others. And the, through the principle of karma, we ourselves experience the darkness and suffering we have created uh, to others. And through suffering, a new ability begins to grow in our mentality, namely uh, the ability to sympathize with others the ability to empathize with all other living beings. So we see at the symbol, we see the omnipresent, eternal Godhead. Ah, it's working. We see the I or the self of the Godhead and the super consciousness of the Godhead. And we see the eyes of the living beings with these white circles here, which actually have the same eye as the Godhead. This is getting very tricky. I think this, it's, uh, it's the uh, leading in. High in any leading, uh, Aurin, or? Hmm. Oh. I'm not going to touch this <laughs> for the rest of the evening, I think. <laughs> so, but we can see, you know, um, I mentioned the, the Godhead, and we have the same eye as the Godhead, but here we see the, the, sons, of, the sons of God. Here it is. It's a very tricky uh, pointing pin here. And here we see the, uh, the realms or the zones where the Godhead 
uh, or the God's sons are faced with God, because we're always, we're always faced with God. In, in actuality, nothing in our experience or in the world that we sense is not a part of the, of the Godhead. So everything that exists is a part of the Godhead, both uh, spiritually and, and in the physical world. So uh, we have, I mentioned the, the, um, the suffering zone, the animal kingdom. So we have the physical zones here, and we have the spiritual zones here. So basically there are two um, basic uh, contrast principles, the principle of, of, of light here up in the divine kingdom, kingdom of wisdom, and the, the real human kingdom later. Um, and we have the physical worlds, the contrast of the darkness, uh, mostly here in the animal kingdom, where we uh, culminate in, in darkness and suffering and creating karma. And, and of course, the, the main principle of the animal kingdom is the principle of killing. The animals have to kill each other to, to have food on the table, so to speak. So this is an eternal spiral cycle, as Martinez explains, always uh, going up to the spiritual world, getting satiated by the light, the bliss, eternal bliss with the Godhead, being one with God, and then uh, started to longing for the contrast. But we're always on the way to something that we actually long for, because when we are here in the, in the kingdom of bliss, where, where our um, rem remembrance um, ability is uh, and the strongest, we look back in the spiral cycle, and the most, in, in, uh, most um, interesting thing we see is, is the contrast to the light. So we look very much as this, and then we want to come back again. We want to go another cycle. But we don't see it as, as um, when we look at it from this point of view, from the kingdom of bliss, we don't see the suffering. We just see that, that it, it gave us some light also. So we're always, always on the principle of hunger and satiation. We're always going um, after our longings, and, and there's always light ahead. We're always um, wanting to go places where we have been satiated in the, uh, from the contrast. Yes. Um, in the simple impulses of the creative principle, or the Spirit of God upon the faces of the waters, we can see precisely how God, uh, God's consciousness or spirit flows through everything that exists. We have the, uh, the eye of the Godhead here and the creative uh, principle. So this is the Spirit of God or, or God consciousness that really uh, is, the, is the foundation of everything that we can ex exist, both in the spiritual and the physical world. So the life force or mentality of Godhead is it's actually floating through everything, the whole universe, uh, both micro and, and, um, and macro universe. It is the inner life force that gives life and matter to the living beings. And according to Martinus, there exist only living beings like cells in the organism of this eternal Godhead. And there's a quote from the Book of Life, Leave It Spo, number six, number six, that I have included, with, which describes precisely the relationship between the living being and the deity or Godhead in this regard. Um, it's revelation as an omnipresent higher auxiliary power is irreversible and permeates all living beings. All their spiritual mental gravity is directed towards this higher power. Just as the physical gravity of the beings, it is directed towards the center of the earth. Just as the being's physical center for equilibrium is based on its gravitational direction towards the center of the earth, so too it is the spiritual center of equilibrium of beings directed towards this higher power, which is thus an expression of all lives, all governing greatest living being. So we are, we are living inside this eternal organism of the God. And this is the only thing actually that, that we can meet in our life. Uh, 
I, mean, I mentioned before one of the cosmic principle of creation, the hunger and satiety principle. But there's another important principle uh, when trying to understand life as a, a practice of love. And this is the karma principle. And I have a quotation also here from the Book of Life, number seven. No being can have a faith that, is the, that it is not the absolutely only originator of. Absolutely all living beings get exactly the faith they themselves have created through their behavior towards other living beings. A living beings absolutely only certain protection against an evil fate is born precisely of the protection itself gives all other living beings. So in life, we are constantly harvesting pleasant and less pleasant influences from the surroundings. And at the same time, we are constantly creating new future fate or experiences of pleasant or unpleasant nature. And the karma principle is, of course, something universal. It is something that applies everywhere over the whole infinite universe. And there is no time in eternity where we are not subject to this principle. And of course, with all due respect to the yoga traditions and philosophical schools that believe that when you get developed enough, uh, you can uh, come free from this uh, eternal karmic cycle. But according to Martinus, it's a cosmic impossibility. No matter how developed one is being, uh, that we become, uh, we can become Christ or Buddha or, or in the highest um, worlds uh, as um, in, the, in the kingdom of um, bliss. Uh, where we are, so to speak, one with the Godhead, we also release energy, create ideas, have, uh, have life experience. And where there's movement and life experience, there's always karma that is being, being created and, and experienced. It's not uh, bad karma, it's not suffering karma, um, but good karma, of course. It's, a, it's eternal bliss in, in, in this highest worlds. Uh, so it's completely different in the spiritual worlds than here down in the physical world where we are now. And the karma principle has a different role where in the physical world it, its role is to teach us the consequences uh, of a wrong thinking and, and wrong uh, doing, wrong behavior. And when we look at the symbol, the eternal body, it is the eternal nature of the living being Martinus tries to show. And in reality, the sum of all our, of all our karmic activity in, in eternity, our whole eternal past and future is uh, depicted in, in one picture or symbol. And here we can see that all our eternal uh, karmic activity rests in an eternal equilibrium. When every single movement or expression we have created in our eternal life is calculated, we see this eternal balance. And of course, we also see that all our life expressions or manifestation uh, return to ourself. You can see the, the eye here, and the, uh, these are the karmic waves. We can see he, he divides it up to six different um, areas of the karmic waves to indicate the, the six zones of the sp spiral um, cycle. But this is the eternal, I like to call it, it's a snap, uh, snap uh, chat or snap uh, shot of eternity, because this is really a picture um, of how, who we are and how we look in eternity. This is eternal future and, 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 and past in one single picture. So it's a really, really uh, a beautiful picture and very powerful. I think I've always, always been very, very happy about this picture. And we see the self or the eye. I've done that, yes. So it's a simple clearly shows that it is cosmically impossible to experience anything you have not created yourself. Both gross and unpleasant influences from life or other people or pleasant influences from the surroundings. 
And it can be physical things you are affected by, but also the moods and feelings uh, that we experience or are exposed to in, in life. So life has a built-in method both to train us in the dark life expressions where we can become geniuses in manifesting the darkness towards other living beings. And when we begin to be satiated with the darkness based on the unpleasant karma effects we experience, then we actually start longing for more peaceful uh, conditions or yeah, life conditions. But this process takes a long time before we really start to understand that if we are to experience peace and empathy from other people, then we also must manifest these quality, qualities towards others. So we have to do the work, we have to do the work on ourselves. There's no, no shortcuts. <laughs> And this applies not only to humans, but also have how we treat the animals and our planet and our microcosmos with our lifestyle, the way we eat and the way we are thinking and the way we are towards other people. Uh, according to Martinez, humanity is currently experiencing the, the culmination of darkness or the doomsday period. And if you look out over the world today, we see crisis, rebellion, and wars, we see how the Godhead reveals more now than before, how darkness works, how the financial world sets the agenda with the help of the principle of robbery. And not, not at least, this period reveals the behavior of human beings um, towards uh, each other, where we in a very concentrated form meet the consequences of our behavior or actions towards humans and animals. It's, a, it's a, a collective karmic wave, one can say. And this applies, of course, both uh, to, through, uh, to, to pandemics, famine, natural disaster, and wars, and etc. And Martinus um, describes this, this period as an epoch of the day of judgment, a mental cleansing bath. It will cost mankind an ocean of life, blood, and tears to God get into harmony with the laws of life. The road to the new earth and heaven goes only through regretting one's sin in relation to one's neighbor. The mission of the day of judgment is to remind people of their forgotten love for their neighbor. So this is the mission of, of, of this culmination of darkness or Doomsday, or Ragnarök, as we know it in Scandinavia. But if you are a humane person, you have nothing to be afraid in this, um, this period, Martinus stresses. But he, Martinus, he advises us all to work with the unfinished parts of our mentality and become more aware of the parts in us that contribute to the conflict between people. Intolerance towards people who think differently, anger, revenge, jealousy, etc. And practice being like a mental son for each other with empathy and understanding for each other's differences. We have a built-in mentality from the animal kingdom, uh, from the herd mentality or the flock mentality, that we think everyone should be and think like ourselves. And we judge people largely based on this criterion. But this is a way of thinking. This way of thinking will never um, be able to create peace in the world. The only way we can have peace in the world is for each of us to start reshaping our lives to be a peace cell and the planet organism and human society. We cannot change others and this is, in fact, the cause of all discord and wars, that we think we can change the others and, them, uh, and, and make them with different means, make them to, to be uh, and think like ourselves. So from a cosmic point of view, it is actually the Earth being's talent for manifestation of darkness, the killing principle, which is in death cramps, and therefore, we are experiencing this doomsday period, which really 
extends from World War I through World War III and its aftermath. At the same time, in step with the infatuation of the Earth being and its almost perfect ability to neighborly love, very strong spiritual energies affect Earth, which have now for approximately uh, 100 years lifted man colossally uh, or, or very <laughs> hugely intellectually. So what we see is that as the light begins to grow, the shadows become more apparent. The spiritual darkness becomes more apparent. And what we actually see is what is called in the Bible the death of the serpent, or the talent core of the earth being for the manifestation of darkness or the killing principle. With Martinus' own words, the terrestrial community of mankind constitutes of a cosmic reality which is in the course of development. In this process, it represents a state expressing a state of transition from animal kingdom to humane kingdom. This state will therefore take the form of a fight between the dominating energies of these two kingdom, kingdoms, which again may be expressed respectively, as selfishness and unselfishness. These two um, energies or, or concepts, selfishness and unselfishness, that's, that's very, very important to get a, a hold on or grasp about. So in reality, we are in the middle of the downfall of an old world culture, where we are in the process of evolving from the last rem remnants of the animal kingdom with its mentality where the strong winds over the bullies and the strong bullies the weak and all the traditions of the animal kingdom where man is partly subject to the conditions of life of the animal kingdom and partly subject to the new human humane conditions of life with the humane ideals as the new bearer of culture and no one should be surprised that it is not easy to stop instinctive habits and traditions that have characterized our behavior and culture for thousands of incarnations. So there's really a huge struggle between the animal in our consciousness, or the animal mentality, and the new human tendencies, a struggle between selfishness and selflessness in reality, as uh, Martinus uh, points out. <laughs> The culmination of darkness. We are now experiencing the culmination of materialism and technical know-how, but neither this growing intelligence, the science born from this, nor the religions, the Western sin complex that Jesus has died for our sins, and the practice of the East meditation could bring happiness to people or peaceful living conditions. Why? Why haven't the religions been able to, to help us more? And the science, we have all the science to make a beautiful world and uh, beautiful societies. That is because, in great extent, as I see it, that man, mankind, has still so much animal mentality in him. And in order to develop our ability to empathize, with all living beings, we need to face the consequences of our actions. And we see that in this period of darkness, humanity is now experiencing large collective <coughs> karmic waves, which will ultimately lift humanity's consciousness, vibration and human, human ability tremendously in our time and in the future. Many spiritual people think that it is sufficient to sit down and meditate. But according to Martinus, we cannot become more loving by practicing yoga or developing our morals. But we can, of course, get in touch with deeper sides of ourselves and come to some clarity over who we are and what we are struggling with. We can gain more understanding over the life experiences we already have. 
and of course develop and deepen our relationship with the divine if our prayer or meditation takes place in a loving spirit and observes the cosmic laws of prayer and meditation. And that the purpose is not that we should have some spiritual, some, some huge spiritual experiences that, that we may not be ready for yet, or that we long to be spiritual authorities and for people to look up to us. Of course, you can have some powerful spiritual experiences if you sit down for years and meditate for, for hours every day. But as I said, these experiences often come much too soon and people can get a huge um, psychological problems if they have to, if, if the, the, these experiences are too powerful. Then it's much better and safer to work on one's morals. Then the cosmic intuitive sensory abilities will open or become effective completely by themselves when we are ready for it. And morality is precisely what the old religions gave us, a new moral ideals, which have functioned as a kind of mental crutch for our humane development. Many modern people believe that religions have only brought them, or have only brought death and, and wars and misery. But nothing could be further from the truth, actually. They have formed the foundation for the modern, growing, humane culture. So I really, uh, morality is, is absolutely necessary as a, a countermeasure against our toxic thought climates and has been a, a great tool for the, the um, providence to help mankind to lift itself from a very primitive uh, state of, of culture. And Martinus uh, writes here in, in the, the Book of Life, number two, uh, these um, countermeasures are all, without exception, practiced under the ordinary concept of morality. Morality is thus the beginning guide, guideline in controlling thought climates in the same way as science is the beginning guideline in controlling physical climates. So in principle, morality is the same with regard to the creation of thought as science is with regard to physical creation. So, so in reality, Martinus' um, spiritual science is uh, a science of, of neighborly love, of course, but it's also a science of morality to help uh, us understand what is good morality and what is not and, when, and where we are coming from as, as beings. So back to the old world impulse. Um, based on the above, one would think that uh, life's love or empathy training or practice take place completely automatically through the principle of karma. And that is in a way true. According to Martinus, you cannot consciously train your ability to love your ability to empathize with other living beings. But, he, he, he states, when we have enough suffering experiences, there comes a point in our development when we get satiated with the darkness and we begin to long for peace in the world and a secure existence. Then one actually becomes receptive to more humane ideals. And it begins for most people with the old world impulse and through the old world impulse that the earth being itself lays the foundation for the humane religious ideologies. And that humane world redeemers can incarnate with much more humane religious ideals than has been the case before. And although religions at the time are more suggestive in the way they affect people, they become more emotionally inspired um, by these ideals and believe in the, the religious authorities. And they don't have so many questions about life and the deepest nature of life. There are, of course, exceptions, as you see in the, for example, in ancient Greece and other places where people start to wonder, start to philosophize about life's highest questions and... and um, 
and the nature of the world. But these are culture or people who have progressed little further in their development, people which before have passed through um, the old religious states. So the general concept about the old world impulse is that people are animated emotionally by these new ideals. And then people start more or less consciously to live up to these ideals. It, they try to really live up to these uh, ideals as, as in the best way they can. Uh, try to behave better towards their fellow man, try to live up to an ideal of helping the weak in society in, in various ways. And we, we see this to be uh, the case in, in, in high degree, both in Christianity and Islam and, and Buddhism. This, this notion of helping the weak and taking care of people that um, are suffering. But when we come to our time, or the last hundred years or so, we see uh, the new world impulse, which is a combination of a high vibration of intelligence and the energy of feeling. So, so a lot of things started to happen uh, uh, approximately around the year 1900, growing spirituality, strong intelligence development, materialism, atheism, abstract art, individualism, greater freedom and humanism, and all these things I mentioned, um, schools, hospitals, and, and um, democ democracy, de democracies, and so on. And the prelude to the new world impulse is the age of enlightenment, of course, natural science, and some spiritual sciences like theosophy, anthroposophy, and Rosencrosian, etc. So Martinus again states this as the culmination of materialism, where it, it, um, in the Bible it said it's, it's a time of where everybody is in war with everybody. Brother will, will go in war with, with brother, brothers. And, with a grow, and, and this growing intelligence... Um, we have a need for new science for the spiritual realm. And we have the need for a new science, Martinus state. The human being must have a science of the mental world and its laws and of its own mental structure. It must connect its intelligence with a living feeling or neighborly love and that combination will lead the human being to the intuitive experience of the connection between all the living beings who live and move and have their being in the universal organism of the Godhead. This is from uh, an article Martinus wrote, Nervous Breakdown and, and Religion. And it became Martinus's task to bring this new science to humanity uh, not as a, a new object of faith, of course, but pre precisely as a spiritual science, as a culmination of a very old metaphysical and religious traditions of the world uh, redeem uh, principle, where the highest science of life and the eternal principle of life have now been released for all people to study, and study in exactly the way they want to study it themselves. It's a free study. It's free for everybody. So Martinez's mission is thus not to create a new religion, but to pass on a science of life, of life's highest principles, not with a raised finger in any way, but nevertheless shows how different thought, climates, and actions in life have consequences, and how we gradually begin to work on the Godhead's project for humanity to create man in his image, and to help create a kingdom of peace for all beings on the planet, and how all people will gradually develop humanity and empathy for all living beings, and would rather suffer than create suffering for others. And that we all gradually develop towards cosmic consciousness, that we ourselves eventually will be able to see eternity <coughs> and the eternal principles with God's eyes, so to speak. And then we consciously begin to work on our own development. 
When we understand and accept that the things we come across in our life is never the fault of others, but always something we ourselves have created in one way or another, that there is meaning in life, meaning in the things that happen and the people we meet, that there are no co co coincidences anywhere then it is no longer just our emotional life that is inspired by the religious ideals, but there we begin to use our intelligence. We begin to want to, want to understand our lives and the world we live in, the, the eternal cosmic principles. And we begin, as mentioned above, to, more, to work more consciously on our own development. And then sometimes we experience to go ahead of the herd or go ahead of the flock, um, of the flock mentality. We become vegetarians, we stop, stop drinking alcohol and participate in the traditional culture activities which actually belong more to the animal kingdom in many cases than to the future human kingdom. We stop criticizing and slandering other people and then we can experience loneliness for periods and experience that we do not find fit in and not understand or be understood by our fellow human beings. But gradually, more and more people become interested in understanding the deepest premises of life and living their lives in harmony with the cosmic laws. And life on Earth becomes more and more peaceful and becomes a pure paradise in the end for everybody. And Martinez says here, this is from Cosmos, no human beings can be completely free as long as they are not in contact with the forces of nature and the universe. On the contrary, they are often in direct discord with these forces which causes them to experience sad fates, illness, and sufferings. In order to be free, people must first and foremost know what ties bind them. And what ties are there that bind mankind? Well, it is our own unfinished mental remains of the mentality of the animal kingdom. And since everything we experience in life is in fact a reflection of our own inner mentality, since we cannot experience anything that we haven't created ourselves in the past and which returns through the principle of karma, then we begin to understand that the others are not our enemies, even if they sometimes have the task of bringing unpleasant experiences or moods that we do not like. And we begin to understand that life is a personal teaching situation between the individual and the Godhead, or the living universe. And we also begin to understand that to find meaning in life, to have a happy life, we must learn to follow the laws of life and stop going against the laws of life. So, from one more quotation here. The more the individual terrestrial human beings are animated by the spiritual wavelength that is the practical expressions of neighborly love, the more their consciousness is united with the light beings that are spiritual talent kernels in the growing main talents for Christ consciousness or cosmic consciousness in the mentality of the earth. The terrestrial human beings are beginning to become physical talent kernels for the same Christ consciousness. It is the second coming of Christ on earth. Yeah. And so the meaning of the life is to be a, an artist in life, the art of life. Uh, the, the meaning of life in the present stage of development is, the, is that we will all evolve to become some kind of artists of life. We must, be, must become geniuses in living life in the best way. We must become moral geniuses. 
And what does that mean? Well, as our human development progresses, our capacity for compassion grows. And our highest desire in life becomes to be a benefit and a joy to other beings. The meaning of life is thus that we must experience life and enjoy it, enjoy all the fantastic gifts that our planet gives us, enjoy each other's company, create uh, beautiful works of art for each other. There is actually only one rule in this blissful happiness. And it's a rule that we eventually come to carry in our hearts. And that is that we can do everything or anything we want as long as it does not affect others in a negative way. So life is a gift and, and we should uh, enjoy it in, in all the ways that we can. Only one rule, don't hurt others in, in the progress, in the process. So we become completely free to explore all the wishes and desires, abilities and talents we may possess, just as long as we take into account the other living beings around us, both in our microcosmos, our own organism, our middle cosmos, the plants, animals and other people, and macrocosmos, where we must learn to take better care of our planet and stop using it as a garbage can. Martinus also tells us that we must be careful about living too far ahead of our actual development standard. And on the other hand, not behind our development standard either. We need to be where we feel most inspired. There we are most in tune with our actual mentality. And this does not mean that we cannot have great ideals that re represent something higher, something more noble, but ordinary people should not begin to live as ascetics or saints if they are not, nor as a primitive beings if, if one is not with associated uh, selfish and, and destructive behavior. Okay. I think I will end with this um, uh, quotation here. True love manifests itself through giving rather than taking. It will be the highest pleasure for the beings to be able to give and help wherever there is need, to be able to iron out differences, to spread sunshine in the consciousness of sad people, to help other people to get on their feet, to give them a helping hand, to give them guidance etc. It's from an article, it's called The Salvation of the World. So as we gain more life experiences, our empathetic abilities with all living things grow, we gradually begin to tune our consciousness more and more to humanity's greatest ideals, the mentality of rather giving than taking, which is the greatest contrast of the animal kingdoms, every man for himself and the animal kingdom self-preservation drive, where creating joy for others becomes the highest enjoyment, where the animal kingdom's pleasure was precisely the opposite of asserting itself and having power over others. Thank you for the attention.